Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Catherine from Dryer Days Art Studio. So today is the follow-up video from the one I did the other day with the experiment with the frog tape and the masking fluid. And so as you can see here, I'm just kind of getting set up on my painting. So I wanted to use colors similar to this painting that I did right here because this is one of my favorite paintings that I've done using yellow, orange, red, and browns and a little bit of bronze. I just really like this a lot. So I use the exact same colors that I used in this painting right here. And I'm going to do a dirty flip cup pour and just put it in that circular spot there. I will uh, put a link to the video of that other painting right here. Um, right now I'm just kind of showing the colors that I was using in that one. Um, with the brown over here, this is a um, burnt sienna and I did incorporate some bronze in there to give it a little bit of a metallic look and uh, to lighten that brown up just a little bit so it's not too dark. And I did use my treadmill silicone on this one and I just put a couple of drops of that in because you can get a ton of cells with the treadmill silicone. Okay, and let's get started. I'm going to put my paint in for my dirty pour. And I usually always start with white. Should do a video where I start with a different color. And this is how I did pour it on that other painting, I believe. I think I'm trying to do it the same way here. I was alternating opaque and transparent and um, the bright colors here were all translucent, so I had to use the white opaque in between. And so I'll put the white here again. And the red, I believe, um, was also translucent, but the brown, the burnt sienna, is opaque, so I was able to use that. But I think right here what I do, if I'm not mistaken, is I do put some white in, which is okay. Yep, see here I go, I put some white in. And that's all right. All these paintings come out so differently. And then I usually finish up with a little bit of white again right after my last color. And because I'm only using one cup, I am going to flip it, the canvas over, and then just place the cup under it and flip it all over in one foul swoop and let all the paint get down to the canvas as much as possible. And this is my favorite part, of course. And it's nice because we're just using a small confined area. We don't need a ton of paint with this one. Here I'm just trying to get any excess paint to come out of my cup. I like to have as much as possible on the canvas. As you can see, this one came out with a lot of red in it. And as soon as I torch it, just all these cells come alive. A lot of little cells. That's um, kind of predominantly what you get with treadmill silicone. Sometimes you do get big cells, but we got a lot of really little ones here. Um, I do really manipulate and play with this um, a lot because I, I wanted to get these cells bigger. I liked how big they were in that other painting, and there was a lot of dimension of color, and this was just kind of showing a lot of red and white and almost pink and that is because after that red instead of just putting the brown I put white next to the red which is giving us more of that pink look. So for time purposes most of this video is sped up times two so I did not pull this off this quickly. It is sped up and the reason for that is to save time. This was a pretty long video um, but I recommend doing this slowly and the paint on here I would say was probably about 75% dry. Um, I was kind of noticing in that experiment that I did and I've noticed this just with house paint using frog tape too that if it's 100% dry you can get cracking, you can get the paint to lift off. Um, oh my daughter's hand is she's helping me there that's not my third hand that's just my child um, but here this peeled off very 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 nicely and I didn't have the paint very super thick in my experiment video 
the paint was very thick in the middle and we got sort of this lip that came up with it this came off very very nicely and we had kind of that demarcation line where this orb circular planet here um, you could tell the difference between it and the rest of the canvas which is what I wanted um, but it had a, a nice flush appearance to it it didn't have a large um, lip or a wall or anything like that going on between the paint and the canvas so I decided to kind of decided with this coming out looking like a sun or a planet that I wanted to make a night sky around this this is again sped up times two and what I did was I came around with a light blue, a little bit of silver in it, and I just outlined the entire rim here of the circle right up against it. Once I had gotten the blue paint kind of all around it, then I went through and I did this brush stroke where you can see I went up against the rim and did an outward motion from the planet out onto the canvas to break up any lines that I might have had going around in the circular motion. This just gives a nice blended look and again gets rid of any of those lines. And now coming in with some more colors, I just put it right on the canvas here. Uh, usually when I'm starting out with a blank canvas and I'm doing any kind of sky like this or something where I know I'm going to have a lot of colors that are blending, I start out with my colors, my paint colors, and a sponge that is wet and uh, I just go around and I get the whole thing nice and wet with paint and water and and kind of do my general blending to begin with. So I start with the inside with the lightest most color and work my way out. As you can see I did put a round on top of the planet here because I didn't want to get any blue onto my nice freshly done red planet. And so I'm just coming around blending those colors in together. And still using that wet sponge, now I've moved on to the dark blue. I'm just working my way around in a circular motion, following the shape of that circle. Once I have my paint down with my wet technique, I do come in with a dry brush and use a dry brush technique, and I go around and do some blending. These brushes you can get really inexpensively at a craft store. I got these at Michael's. I think they were a dollar a piece. Um, they do shed a little bit. You'll get some uh, fibers or hairs in there from the brush, but some bristles, but um, they work really well for this purpose. As you can see here, I picked up a little bit of that light blue and I'm going back in and blending. And this dry brush technique just really gives a nice buffed, smooth look. Um, I, I enjoy this look a lot more than um, when I'm using water. So still using my dry brush technique here, I did incorporate some more blue around the edges you can see and now I'm going in with that medium blue again to really buff out and blend this. I decided I wanted to kind of um, have a little bit of more lightness going on and the darkness really more out around the edges of the canvas not so close to the planet. So just going in blending, blending, blending. Most of this is just blending so I am speeding it up and I'm cutting some out for time purposes but these again are just dry brushes that I'm going through and I do trade them out. I don't um, if they get too saturated with paint, they aren't doing their job so much anymore. So I do keep a lot of these on hand and I will wash them and while they're drying, I'll use a different dry brush. And just more blending, 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 dry brush. And this just depends on what kind of look you're going for for your painting. Like I said, I wanted more lightness going on around the planet and the darkness more out around the edges. And I made that decision as I was going. I didn't really have this in my mind because I had no idea what the planet was going to look like when it turned out. So now here is a look at the painting with the blue done now and the planet there in the middle. I did go back in right around the very, very, very edge of that planet and I did a very light, almost white 
rim around it to really make those colors pop from that planet in contrast to the blue. I decided I wanted green at the bottom, so that is what I'm putting on here. The reason I'm not using a wet sponge at this point, which I typically would, is because I did, I was working on that blue and it was still a little wet, and so I am using a dry brush here. I am going to speed through a lot of this and edit some of it out because it is just a lot of blending, blending, blending with my dry brush. Um, I used several different greens and I was kind of playing with the colors a lot, so I'll edit most of that out for you guys so you don't have to see all that, but lots of blending with the dry brush. So as I had mentioned, I wanted those edges of the canvas to be dark. I really wanted a contrast, so I am using straight Mars black here, using my dry brush and going around some of my edges. Uh, you can see the ground here, the green is pretty much done. I've really blended it up into that blue sky. And now I'm just going around my edges with my black. I do come in also with a very, very dark blue and blend that into the black to give it an even more blended edge with that dry brush again. So now that I feel like my sky and everything is pretty much done, I'm going to put my stars on. As you can see, I have covered up the planet again, and I get some very wet white paint on the tip of my brush, wet it, get it really wet. This brush wasn't working too well, I ended up switching brushes, but literally just flicking it onto the canvas. Again, this one wasn't working, so I kind of started tapping it and I do end up switching to another brush, but it's a pretty simple technique to give you a lot of stars really fast. So as you can see here, my stars are on. I'm still going back in and really blending more blue into that ground. It was just a little bit too much of a contrast for me between the green going into a creamy white into the sky. So I'm really still just blending that sky down now into that green space. Again, with my dry brush, just taking it even just directly from the paint tube onto my bristles and putting it onto the canvas here. And now that that's done, I'm just continuing around the edges with that dark, dark color giving it a little more depth around the edges. And I am just going to be honest with you guys, once I had all this down, I loved the painting and I didn't really know what to do with it and I have been having a lot of inspiration lately by aliens. I don't know if you can tell and I just thought it would be kind of cool to have this alien looking up at the planet and so, but I kind of, I didn't want it really silhouetted. I, I wanted it kind of a little bit blurry on the painting. And so that's what I'm doing here. I don't know how much I even like it, but I'm, I'm just being honest. Um, I don't do a whole lot with aliens. So maybe it's just because it's out of my comfort zone. Maybe I sort of wish it was a little bit darker and filled in, but this is how I finished it off. I'd love to know what you guys think of this technique, what you think of the planet and the sky and all that. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know, comment, like, subscribe, and uh, until next time, guys, keep on painting.